Silver is decidedly above $30 an ounce now. Silver price has held its ground, so now it's time to rethink our stacking strategy. Let's dive right in. What's up you guys, it's Ocean here. Now we have evidence of a strong silver support level of $30. Understanding this change is super important for stackers to know right now if you're a buyer or a holder of precious metals, we're living in a critical time. We're at a critical point in the silver market. I believe most of you who watch this channel have prepared yourself, including by stacking real money. We're gonna get into all of this. We have news updates on silver, gold, copper, and Kalinex. So let's get into the silver and gold first. We're getting some incredible signals, especially for silver, this is important for us because we're mostly all silver stackers who know silver is the most undervalued asset on earth. TD Securities predicts a major breakout. And remember, last time silver broke $30 spot price, it went to $50 in less than 10 weeks. The volatility of silver ought to be considered. If silver went to $50 per ounce, that wouldn't be unusual, but it would surprise markets. On this bullish trend, the Silver Institute says we're in a historic deficit, and some analysts believe, as I do, I believe we're just getting started as silver plays catch up to gold. Here's another side of the coin. A tip on watching for resistance at $35 based on technical analysis of a multi-year horizontal line going back to 2012. There's a case for silver price stopping at $35 in the short term. So there's a couple perspectives on silver, but all of this comes together to show why we're living in a critical time right now. Let's talk about gold before we go into copper and Kalinex. Gold price is an interesting topic right now because we're at the foothill of a commodities bull market and gold is historically the ultimate form of money. Rapidly increasing debt, declining fiat currency values, strong demand fundamentals, lack of supply growth, and rising geopolitical tensions are four catalysts cited in a recent opinion piece on Kitco News, but the glue is technical analysis that shows what this means long term on a chart. This is an idea I'm not going to forget. I'll show you why. I'll read this quote. The chart shows the past two bull and bear cycles, taking the average of time and percentage gain between these two bull cycles. We might expect the current bull cycle to last for 4.9 years and generate a gain of 175%. That would translate into a bull cycle that runs into the back half of 2027 and brings a peak price around $4,440 per ounce. But even if the price advance were only were to only mirror the smaller of the two last two bull cycles, 98% gain, we get a peak price around $3,230 per ounce. Given the factors discussed below, I think gold is more likely to hit the higher of the two price targets, but anything is possible as the fractional reserve fiat currency model is stress tested. So yeah, I saw this as an incredible insight and I wanted to share, I think $3,200 gold or even $3,000 gold is a reasonable price level that we can grow to without much delay. This is a reasonable price level, okay? And especially given declining fiat currency values alone, just based on that. Long term, gold is moving a, a lot higher, <laughs> a whole lot higher. That's just the nature of inflation in a fiat currency. There's not a time in the future where a US dollar will go further than it does today. Buying gold is great. 
that will always turn out as a good purchase. When someone buys gold, that's awesome. But for most people, you're better off stacking physical silver because it has more price upside potential. And most people haven't stacked so much silver that it's become unmanageable. Anything around $30 an ounce is a good price for silver right now. So I'll lay that out there right now. But what about copper? Did you know that just like gold, copper is at an all-time high right now? That's right. Take a look at this. Saxo Bank said, this is the year of the metals. What did I just say in my last video? This is the summer of silver. And now this is the year of metals. And the hibernation period for non-precious metals may be about to end. Copper is at an all-time high right now and climbing Take a look at this article. This speaks to the value of copper. And we know about copper's use in electric vehicles, but there's a huge demand for copper right now in artificial intelligence data centers. There's a lot of an investment in AI right now that's gonna push copper demand higher. And this is the way I keep seeing copper being explained. Copper is the new oil. And I don't see anything wrong with that. I agree. I think it's a good observation. But copper is $5 a pound, not an ounce, but a pound. So a 50% rise in the price of copper would make a one pound bar worth $7.50. You can imagine why physical copper isn't ideal for stacking in large quantities. Copper is up almost 23% year to date. That's almost double gold. Gold is up 13% year to date. And yes, you're probably wondering about silver. Silver is up 27% year to date. I think it's likely that at the end of the year, it will be copper that is up by the highest percentage of those three metals. So copper is a good buy, but physical ownership of copper is inconvenient in high amounts. I like to have a little bit of exposure, a balance of copper in my portfolio. Thank you to today's video sponsor, Kalinex Mines, ticker CLLXF in the United States. For this company, the key takeaway is the timing is just right. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Kalinex, then we'll get into why this may be the time to rethink our stacking strategies, and this stuff is important to know. Kalinex is a Canadian-based junior miner exploration company operating out of the Flin Flon Mining District alongside their neighbors Hud Bay Minerals, which is one of the largest mining companies in the world. Right now, the resource mining space is at a crossroads. It's a sector-wide consolidation, ready to jump to the upside given the commodities bull market we're at the foothill of. When these equities start moving, it's going to be survival of the fittest, and Kalinex Mines has competitive advantages that make the company poised for success. As stackers, we love to look at purity. Kalinex's mines are producing copper mineralization rates six times the average. I can't stress this enough. Kalinex has some of the highest grade copper in the world. They're mining silver and gold as well, but Kalinex specializes in copper. Independently verified testing shows 3% copper grades coming from Kalinex. Usually copper mines produce half of 1% of copper resource. So the grades or sort of the purity of the mine is 3% copper. That kind of number is usually only found in Africa or Peru. Kalinex is in Canada in a safe mining district. You can't imagine the jurisdictional issues Miners experience trying to do business in Africa. I mean, government challenges, the infrastructure isn't built out. Overall, there's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to places like Africa or Peru. And Kalinex is in a strong position. Their mines are shielded from these issues because they're in Canada. Not only that, Kalinex actually received $1 million in grants from the Canadian government to support high-grade copper discoveries. The Flin Flon Mining District has produced 32 mines over the years. There's roads in place. There's a processing mill. There's hydroelectric power being used. That's actually a huge competitive advantage because 
Wages and utilities are a mining company's largest expenses. So the high grade copper is in the ground, in the mines Kalinex owns, and the environment facilitates operations. The company has no debt. Company ownership shows they have serious skin in the game and with good reason. The CEO, Max Porterfield, is the single largest shareholder. Kalinex management owns over 20% of the company. Kalinex has a well-experienced team. Notably, I'll mention Peter Jones. He's the former CEO of HUD Bay, and HUD Bay Minerals is one of the largest copper miners. They're also neighbors with Kalinex in the Flin Flon Mining District. Overall, Kalinex's technical team have been credited with over half of the discoveries in the Flin Flon Mining District's history, including three of the four largest. As the commodities bull market we're right at the beginning of continues to heat up, the wheat's going to separate from the chaff. And experienced miners with ownership of the resource and the means to operate are going to be the cream of the crop. Kalinex is well established. They've already found success. And the cherry on top of everything I've talked about is the current valuation of the stock. Kalinex is currently trading for around $1 per share. Institutional investors bought their shares of Kalinex at double the current stock price. So that alone is a signal that at a current price, the company is undervalued. So the timing is just right. If you've been considering adding copper miners to your portfolio or Kalinex mines specifically, it's a great time to do your due diligence and look into Kalinex mines, ticker CLLXF. Right now, spot prices are high, higher than we're used to seeing them. It's a critical time to stay focused on your stacking goals. Continue to dollar cost average into your stack. Silver and copper have the most upside, so keep stacking silver. And if you like copper, I like copper, just not for physically stacking. If you're interested in the copper market, take a look at Kalinex Mine's website. Everything I've been talking about is on their website, and there's even more information there for you to read. Gold stacking, you can never go wrong with, but silver and copper are the metals that are on a path for even larger value appreciations relative to the dollar. So don't lose sight of actively adding to your positions because we're only at the foothill of the commodities bull market. Stack white as the ocean.